Reed Richards' Descendant? Inspired by Doctor Doom, here's the truth about Ant-Man 3's Kang the Conqueror. Although Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania will be the official debut of the menace known as Kang the Conqueror, it's not Jonathan Major's first rodeo in the MCU. The actor played the role of He Who Remains in the first season finale of Loki, revealed to be the mastermind behind the Timekeepers and the Time Variance Authority. However, the character's ties to Kang the Conqueror were worn on his sleeve. You're a flea on the back of a dragon. <laughs> in for one hell of a ride. After Loki and Sylvie confront He Who Remains at the Citadel at the end of time, Major's character reveals his backstory, which just so happens to be the same as Kang's from the comics. He Who Remains was originally a scientist from the 31st century who, after discovering the existence of the multiverse, used it to make contact with his variants across space and time. Sooner or later, some of those variants waged war in pursuit of conquering the multiverse, and once He Who Remains came out on top, he isolated the sacred timeline and created to the TVA to prune any unwanted branches. Major's performance in the Loki finale was well received, especially by MCU fans who had correctly theorized Kang's involvement in the earlier episodes. However, the character's presence was a clear warning sign of what's to come, with the series' head writer Michael Waldron saying in an interview with Marvel.com, I was trying to really hint at that terrifying evil within without going all the way there. He Who Remains, while being an interpretation of Kang the Conqueror himself, also has his own ties to Marvel's comic book origins. However, his main inspiration is not the character of the same name, who created both the Timekeepers and the TVA in the comics and first debuted in the 1970s. No, the MCU iteration of He Who Remains actually has much more in common with a specific variant of Kang, Immortus. In the comics, Immortus was a version of Kang who grew tired of conquering and retreated to a dimension outside of space and time known as Limbo, which bears a lot of similarity to the Void in Loki. There, Immortus got in contact with the Timekeepers, who offered him the job of influencing events in the Sacred Timeline to prevent mankind from straying off their planned destinies. The MCU version of He Who Remains is a composite of both the original He Who Remains from the comics and Immortus. This is reflected in the character's clothing in the Loki finale, which combines the familiar purple and green colors of Immortus with the comfort of He Who Remains' robes. In the making of Loki on Disney+, Majors reveals He Who Remains' outfit also drew inspiration from Genghis Khan and the Victorian era. Although he's mainly known for his antagonistic role as Kang the Conqueror, the character's long and storied past ties him to one of Marvel's most popular teams. Before he traveled the multiverse, conquering and ruling, Kang was an earthly scientist named Nathaniel Richards. Despite living in the 31st century, Kang's heritage traces all the way back to none other than Reed Richards, the smartest man alive and the leader of the Fantastic Four. Even though the cast of Matt Shankman's upcoming MCU Fantastic Four film has yet to be announced, Reed Richards, like Kang, also made his MCU debut in Phase 4. He was portrayed by John Krasinski in a brief appearance in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Given the Fantastic Four's impending arrival in the MCU, as well as their importance in the comic book events of Secret Wars, there's no doubt that Kang and the Fantastic Four will inevitably cross paths on the big screen. However, Kang the Conqueror's ties to Reed Richards may be even more complex than that. Comic book fans will know that Reed Richards' father also happened to be named Nathaniel. Some theorists have speculated that Reed Richards' father was yet another variant of Kang the Conqueror who traveled back in time and created his own legacy. Perhaps this will prove to be an important aspect of Kang's character in the 2026 film Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Kang the Conqueror's Fantastic Four ties don't stop with his lineage. The character also draws plenty of inspiration from one of the biggest and most popular Fantastic Four antagonists, Doctor Doom. Fan anticipation and speculation regarding the official MCU introduction of Doctor Doom remains some of the highest the film franchise has seen to date. The character is closely tied to the events of Secret Wars in the comics, and his full potential has yet to be realized on the big screen. Of course, the introduction of Kang and the promise of the Fantastic Four means Victor Von Doom is on a collision course with the MCU. 
Having been defeated by the Fantastic Four in the comics, one variant of Kang ends up encountering Doctor Doom in the 20th century. Inspired by the Latverian Conqueror, this version of Kang dubs himself the Scarlet Centurion and forces the Avengers to face their alternate selves in a multiversal war. He even takes inspiration from Doom's outfit for his own. For Kang's MCU future, it's possible he'll be inspired by Doom in any number of ways. Donning a similar outfit as Doom is certainly a possibility, as is pitting the Avengers against each other as the main plot of Avengers Secret Wars. From the look at Jonathan Major's Kang in the first trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it seems his outfit already has Doctor Doom vibes. There are many other Kang the Conqueror variants whose comic book iterations may influence the look of Jonathan Major's portrayal in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, as well as future appearances in the MCU. One of the earlier versions of Kang to debut in the comics appears after Nathaniel Richards time travels to ancient Egypt. There he becomes a ruler and worshipped figure amongst the Egyptians under the moniker Ramatut. Of course, Kang the Conqueror's affiliation with ancient Egypt in the comics perfectly lends the Marvel Cinematic Universe the opportunity to have the character come to blows with Moon Knight and Khonshu. This comic book premise is an early storyline for the Fantastic Four, who find themselves taken prisoner by Ramatun in the past. It's possible that this storyline could serve as the basis for the upcoming Fantastic Four movie, which would mean that Jonathan Major's Kang could take on the appearance of an Egyptian pharaoh. Nevertheless, it's also possible that the upcoming Fantastic Four film will revolve around the original team's encounters with the Skrulls, who have also already made their MCU debut. Perhaps Kang the Conqueror's relationship with Ancient Egypt will be explored through his costume design in future films, such as the Kang Dynasty, or even in the second season of Loki. When Major's appearance in the third Ant-Man movie as Marvel supervillain Kang the Conqueror was first announced, many fans were rightfully surprised. Given the lighthearted nature of Paul Rudd's MCU franchise, it seemed like an odd couple to pair his smarmy thief with one of the cruelest and most sinister characters that Marvel has to offer. Nevertheless, the two are set to square off in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's highly anticipated start to 2023. So, what's it gonna be? The first trailers for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania have given insight into what beef there will be between Kang the Conqueror and Scott Lang. After accidentally ending up in the Quantum Realm, it appears that Kang is hiring Scott to perform a heist for him, which is certainly in Scott's skill set, even in another dimension. Fans have speculated that Kang wants Scott to steal back his time chair, which is what Kang uses to time travel. Other fan speculation theorizes that the current owner of Kang's time chair is none other than MODOK, who's also set to appear in the film. Some fans believe the time chair can be spotted in one of the first trailers to Ant-Man 3, depicting Kang standing in front of it wearing a very comic-accurate costume. Though it's unclear why Kang wants his precious time travel device back, one can assume he plans to use it for the purpose of doing, you know, what he does best. Conquering. The presence of another significant Marvel baddie, MODOK, may also allude to a much different path for Kang the Conqueror than fans are anticipating. In Marvel Comics, there's precedent set for Kang to have a change of heart. One teenage variant of Nathaniel Richards encounters his future self a bit early when Kang time travels to protect his younger self from a life-altering injury. Taking the younger Nathaniel Richards under his wing, Kang attempts to show himself the legendary ruler he'd become only for this lecture to frighten him instead. In an attempt to reverse his destiny, this Nathaniel Richards assembles a young Avengers team, with himself as their leader, wearing a Stark-esque suit and donning the name Iron Lad. His teammates include several characters who have already made their Marvel Cinematic Universe debuts, including Kate Bishop, Elijah Bradley, and Wanda's twin sons. One of Richards' other assembled teammates is Cassie Lang, with whom he crosses paths during the events of Quantumania. Despite reports of Major's role as the next Thanos level threat in the MCU, the plot of Ant-Man 3 could take a sharp turn with Kang having a moment of redemption. With the Young Avengers potentially being on the horizon, the debut of Jonathan Majors or another actor as Iron Lad could come much sooner than later. Another Quantumania theory concerns a certain casting announcement from 2022. To the surprise of many fans, The Good Place star William Jackson Harper was confirmed to be appearing in Peyton Reed's third Ant-Man film. What's even more interesting is that the actress' role is a 
apparently top secret. Though it's more than likely Harper will join Bill Murray as some sort of citizen living in the quantum place, some fans speculate something much more significant for the actor. Notably, he's been a frontrunner for many fan castings for the Fantastic Four, particularly in the role of Reed Richards per the AV Club. Harper's role as Chidi on The Good Place certainly shows he's qualified to capture the awkwardness and physique of Marvel's smartest man alive. This is especially true after rumors that John Krasinski's cameo as Richard in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness was a one-off appearance. However, Harper's potential casting as Reed Richards could also prove very relevant to the appearance of Kang the Conqueror. Given the comic book origins of Kang as a descendant of Reed Richards, it would make some sense for William Jackson Harper to be cast as the ancestor to Jonathan Majors. The only thing throwing this theory off is other rumors surrounding Fantastic Four casting options, including Penn Badgley and Adam Driver, via the direct. While many Marvel Cinematic Universe fans are beyond excited for Kang the Conqueror to make his debut in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, no one is more excited than Jonathan Majors himself. The character's role in the film will have a very big impact on the MCU, according to the film's director Peyton Reed in an interview with Empire. Predictably, it's this impact on the MCU as a whole that initially drew Jonathan Majors to the role in the first place. Speaking to Marvel.com on his appearance in the Loki finale, Majors said he was drawn to the aspect of Kang's character that let him play many different versions of the same villain. Reincarnation, baby. On his appearance in Quantumania, Majors had only one thing to say at Marvel's San Diego Comic-Con panel in 2022, which was, there will be conquering. Clearly, this is only the beginning of Majors' journey as the character heading towards Avengers The Kang Dynasty in 2025. See you soon.